Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 11 to 15 of the Algebra 2 Trigonometry Regions exam for January 2015. All right, let's take a look at number 11. It reads, what is the total number of different nine letter arrangements that can be formed using the letters of the word Tennessee? Okay, so this um, problem is a problem that involves permutation with repetitions. Okay, so let's say you have um, a word with P letters and you have um, R, Q, and S repetitions. The number of unique arrangements of the letters of the word P um, can be given by um, arrangements <clears throat> arrangements of P can be given by P factorial divided by the repetition. So R factorial times Q factorial times S factorial. Okay. So with Tennessee, first of all, we want to find the total number of words and then we'll divide it by the factorial of the words that repeat. Okay. So Tennessee, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine words in all. Okay. So we're going to have nine factorial on the top, so nine letters total. Now we want to focus on the repetitions, okay? The ones that don't repeat are one factorial, which is just one and has no impact on the product, okay? So T, uh, no repetitions there. So E, we have one, two, three, four. We have four E's. Okay, now let's just put the one T there, one T. Uh, and then for N, what do we have with N? We have one, two, two N's, two N's. <clears throat> and then how about S's? For S's we have one, two, we have two S's. All right, so two S's. If you add up all the letters, we have four plus one, uh, it's five, five plus four is nine, so that works perfectly, okay? So we're gonna have nine factorial divided by four factorial times two factorial times two factorial, okay? You just simply um, plug that into your calculator. You end up with 3,780 arrangements of the letters in the word Tennessee, okay? So answer is option um, number one. All right, let's take a look at problem 12. It reads, what is the fourth term of the sequence divide by, de defined by a1 equals 3xy to the fifth, an equals 2x over y times a sub n minus 1? This is um, a recursive definition problem where n is dependent on the term that occurs before it for its definition. Okay, so if this were 3, this would be two, if this were two, this would be one, if this were one, that would be zero, okay? So we want to find the fourth term. We know the first term is three x y to the fifth. So what is the second term going to be? So um, we're going to use this formula here. So a two is going to be two x over y times a sub two minus one, which is one. We already know what um, A1 is. <clears throat> A1 is 3x uh, y to the fifth. So we just substitute it into the um, expression for A2. So we have 2x over y then times 3x y to the fifth. Okay. Uh, so y goes here one, y goes there four times. And then when you multiply uh, those two together, you would get um, 2 times 3, which is 6, 6x six squared, y to the fourth. All right, next term we want to find is a3. a3 is 2x over y, using the same formula, times a3 minus 1, which is a2. But what is a2? a2 is 6x squared, y to the fourth, right? So we just plug it in, we have 2x over y times a2, which is 6xy to the fourth. So we divide out the y, so um, 
y goes here 1, y goes here 3, and they multiply across. That gives you 2 times 6, which is 12x squared, y to the third. Okay. Oh, wait, just a real quick correction. This is a square here, so this is supposed to be 12x to the third, y to the third. Okay. Uh, we are asked to find the fourth term, so one more. So a4 is going to be 2x over y, using the same recursive definition, times a sub 4 minus 1, which is a sub 3. So that's going to give us 2x over y times 12x to the third, y to the third. This is the third term, a sub 3, okay? So y goes here 1, y goes here 2. And when you multiply across, you're going to have 2 times 4, which is 20. I mean, 2 times 12, which is 24, x to the fourth, y square as the fourth term with this recursive definition. Answer is option number Three. All right, let's take a look at number 13. It says, what is the solution set of the absolute value of x minus 2 equals 3x plus 10? So this is an easy problem. You can just plug in on these answers to see which one works, but I'm going to solve it and check my answers just to ensure I'm not including any extraneous solutions, okay? So absolute value can be replaced with plus or minus x minus 2 equals 3x plus 10, okay? And then um, what I can do now is I can split this equation into two, the negative piece, negative x minus two equals 3x plus 10, and the positive piece, which is x minus two equals 3x plus 10, okay? Let's uh, solve for x here. We can divide both sides by negative one. So we have, um, x minus 2 equals negative 3x minus 10. To get x isolated here, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. And to get this 2 to the other side, I will um, go ahead and add 2 to both sides. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. If I do that, I'm going to have 4x the 2's cancel out equals the 3x's cancel out, negative 12. No, 10 divided, 10 minus, negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. Okay, divide both sides by 4. And that gives me my first possible solution, which is negative 2. So I have x equals negative 2. Now here, it's much easier. I'll just simply add 2 to both sides and subtract 3x. All right, so if we do that, I'll have negative 2x equals 12, then divide both sides by negative 2. And our final answer is x equals uh, negative 6. Now, is there a possibility that one of these two answers are extraneous? Well, we have to do a check just to make sure that um, they're both valid solutions. So let's go ahead and check right here. Let's check x equals negative 2. The question is, if I plug in that solution into the original problem, will I end up with a true statement? That's the question. So the absolute value of negative 2 minus 2 equals 3 times negative 2 plus 10. How did I get this? I plugged in my answer into the original problem. Is the absolute value of negative 4 equals, multiply that, negative 6 plus 10. Is it? Absolute value of um, negative 4 is 4. Is 4 equals 4? Absolutely. So this is a good answer. Now let's check the second one. x equals negative 6, second candidate. Is the absolute value of negative 6 minus 2 equal to 3 times negative 6? plus 10, is it? Simplify this, you have negative 8 absolute value, 3 times negative 6 is negative 18 plus 10. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8, negative 18 plus 10 is negative 8. Is this true or false? This is false, so this is not an answer, it's an extraneous solution. So our answer is option number 2. 
All right, let's take a look at number 14. It reads, by law, a wheelchair service ramp may be inclined no more than 4.76 degrees. If the base of a ramp begins 15 feet from the base of a public building, which equation could be used to determine the maximum height h of the ramp where it reaches the building's entrance? Okay, so uh, when you're, you're formulating calculations on a description, it's always good to give yourself a visual, okay? So we have, let's say this is the entrance right here. <clears throat> There's the entrance. Now what's going on is um, the entrance is not at the level of the floor, it's elevated, okay? So we have a ramp um, to the entrance, okay? And then there's a ramp. This is the height from the ground and this is the length how far the base of the ramp is, okay? All right, so um, let's go ahead and put in our measures. This, of course, is the ramp right here. The angle here is 4.76 degrees. This must not be exceeded, okay? Or else you might have a, an issue with people sliding down in accidents like that. Um, okay, so that's 4.76. Now, it says, if the base of the ramp begins 15 feet from the base of the building, so this entire length is 15, base of the ramp all the way to the base of the building. But that's the entrance to the building. Let us let me make it a little bit more obvious what's going on here. So you know how some buildings have elevated entrances, so that's what's happening here. Okay, so there goes the entrance, and then you have the door right here, and then people can just walk in. Okay, now... Um, so, H represents the height um, of the ramp when it reaches the building's entrance. So, this is H right here. So, um, what equation can we use to determine the maximum value of H so that this um, requirement is not exceeded? Okay. Now, this is a right triangle setup problem. Anytime you're dealing with right triangles, two sides, and an angle, you automatically want to use SOKATOA. Okay, that's the easiest way to find the relationship between two sides and a given angular measure. Now, anytime you want to use Sokatoa is, is with respect to an angle. This is the angle under consideration, so we will label this entire triangle with reference to 4.76. Okay, so if that's 4.76, the side opposite it is the opposite. Okay, opposite, that's O in Sokatoa. The side opposite 90 degrees, the longest side is a hypotenuse in this problem. We do not care about it. Uh, the other side is the adjacent. Okay, that's A in Sokatoa. So the question now is which trig ratio has O and A in it? Tan, right? So we're going to have tan of the angle 4.76 is equal to the opposite, which is H over the adjacent, which is 15, using TOA component of SOKATOA. All right, let's take a look at number 15. It says when 7 over 8x squared minus 3 over 4x is subtracted from 5 over 8x squared minus 1 fourth x plus 2, the difference is... Now, what you want to notice here is that um, the order of subtraction is the reverse of how it's written here. So, this subtracted from this means that we have the following situation. We have 5 over 8x squared minus 1 over 4x plus 2. This minus 7 over 8x squared minus 3 over 4x. That's what we were doing, okay? So we're just going to um, make use of a parenthesis here so we do not mess up our signs, okay? So this minus that entire thing. Now, when you're subtracting, you want to distribute this minus to these two terms so that we can combine it easily. So we have 5 over 8x squared minus 1 over 4x plus 2 equals 7 over 8x squared plus 3 over 4x. Okay, so let's go ahead and combine like terms. The squares, we have um, 5 
5 over 8x squared minus 7 over 8x squared. For the x's, we have 1 over 4x plus 3 over 4x. And for the constants, we just have 2. All right? Now, this simplifies into negative 2 over 8x squared, just by subtracting 7 from 5. Minus uh, 1, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, positive 2 over 4x plus 2. And then to finish it up, just simplify. Okay, so we have negative 1 over 4x squared minus 1 over 2x plus 2. All right, so our answer for that, let's see, negative 1 over 4. It's option number Let's see, hold on. Uh, oh, this is supposed to be a plus right here because we have the bigger one is positive, so this is plus, and that's plus, right? Yes, yeah, so our answer is option number three.